Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create fun flower patterns using the Mandela feature in Adobe Photoshop. To get started, let's go ahead and create a new document. We'll click on Create New. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the size 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. And then we are going to deselect artboards here. Set the resolution to 300 pixels per inch. Background contents are transparent. And then we'll go ahead and click on Create. I have a, another video tutorial using the Mandela feature to create a flower. With that one, we created it using the simple circle from a brush. Uh, for this tutorial, I wanted to show you that you can also use this technique for different shapes. So let's go ahead and draw out a circle here. So I'm going to access the ellipse tool. I'm going to go ahead and change uh, the defaults back to normal here. So with my ellipse tool selected, I'm going to go ahead and shift click and drag here. So we have our circle, um, but this time I'm going to turn it into more of a oval. So just kind of changing the shape here a little bit to get a little bit skinnier petals here. Once I have the shape that I want, I'm going to go back to my layers panel here and then just clicking on the icon here, I'm going to go command or control click, which will cause uh, the shape to be selected here. And then I'm going to define that as a brush. So we're going to go to edit, define brush preset, and then you can give it a name if you'd like, and then just select OK. And then we can go ahead and just turn off that ellipse and then we'll go ahead and deselect command D here. So next we are going to uh, just select a new layer here and then I'm going to make sure my brush tool is selected here. You can always push B on the keyboard. And then we are going to go up to the Mandela feature here by clicking on the icon that looks like a butterfly and then selecting Mandela. And then here you can uh, change the segments. We're going to bring it up to uh, all the way to the top to 10 and then click on OK. And then you'll notice that you'll have a uh, kind of a working path created here. And then you can just go ahead and click on OK here. And then I'm going to, with our brush tool selected in our newly created uh, brush here selected, um, let's go ahead and decrease that size here by choosing the left bracket key on the keyboard. And then we'll go ahead and just make a, just go ahead and click on it. And then it will create that symmetrical repeat of that oval shape here. So we'll go ahead and select that there. So clicking back on the um, butterfly icon, we'll just go ahead and turn the symmetry off here. And then uh, what I want to do is I'm just going to uh, just use my brush tool and just kind of fill in that area so it is solid. I'm going to create a circle for the middle. So using our ellipse tool here, let's go ahead and change the color so we can see it uh, when we create it. So um, shift click, just dragging it out. Um, and then if I hit the space bar, I can move it to the center just to kind of get a feel for where I want my circle, if I want it to get a little bit bigger or not. And then we have our circle here. Uh, now that we have our circle where we want it, I'm going to go ahead and click on this layer. We're going to go Command or Control click, and that's going to highlight the area around this circle. And then selecting my flower layer. I'm going to access the marquee tool by selecting M on the keyboard and then just hitting right click and then we are going to do a layer via cut. And then I can get rid of these small circles here. And then as you can see, we have a cut up of a cutout of our flower here. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of these layers here. And then I'm just going to convert this one to a smart object. And then let's go ahead and turn that off for now. And then let's try, uh, let's create another flower shape here. So we'll access the brush tool again by selecting B on the keyboard. And then let's give ourselves a new layer here. And then we'll go back to our Mandela tool, clicking on Mandela. And then let's do, uh, let's do 10 segments again here. And then uh, we'll access 
uh, selecting OK, and then we have our brush, and then we still have our oval shape here. Um, let's go a little bit smaller, and then let's go out a little bit further here, and then select there. And then uh, the color of it doesn't matter at this point, but we had the blue selected down here. And then we can go ahead and uh, turn that symmetry off. And then I'm going to uh, turn this color black just for the visual of it. So I'm um, hitting the uh, icon here to lock the transparent pixels. We're going to set this back to default by selecting D on the keyboard and then just um, option delete or alt backspace to just fill it in black. I like to work with black. It's just visually it's easy to see there. So we have ourselves a, another flower. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the regular brush here. And then on this layer, I'm going to go ahead and bring that down. And then we will create just another circle here in the middle. Uh, with that layer I selected, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the lock icon here. And then just with that layer selected, I'm just going to draw another circle in the center to uh, complete my flower here. So uh, with this flower, let's go ahead and convert that to a smart object as well. So uh, we will have that selected with the move tool V on the keyboard. Let's go ahead and just bring it down in size a little bit here. And then we'll do the same for this one. So right now we have two flowers that we can create a pattern with. Let's go ahead and turn on our pattern preview mode by going to view pattern preview. And then I'm going to zoom out uh, commander control and then just the minus sign here. And then let's drag one of these flowers to the corner and then just center one of them there. And so we have uh, two different flowers and just kind of a simple repeat here. So let's go ahead and uh, just change the colors here. So we'll add a solid color adjustment layer for the background. And then I'm just going to use um, a color palette here that I have. So I'm going to select this dark color here. And then let's go ahead and do the same for this flower here. I'm going to use another solid color adjustment layer, uh, selecting my blue color here, and then creating a clipping mask by hovering between the two layers, option click to create uh, that clipping mask there. And then we'll do that one more time, a solid color adjustment layer, and then selecting my final color here, creating the clipping mask, which you can also do by right clicking and then select create clipping mask. And then I have my pattern here. I like to work with um, adjustment layers because I can easily see the colors and then click them there. Um, but you can also do that. Um, another way to do that is if I don't want to use this is I can double click on this layer. You can select, you can select color overlay here and then you can change uh, the color from here. You can select that dark color there and then click on OK. So um, that's another way you can do it as well. Um, but I tend to like to use the uh, clipping mask here. That way I can visually see it without having to uh, double click into the layer um, there. To add uh, define our pattern, we are going to go to edit define pattern. And then you can choose to give it a name here and then click on OK. And then let's go ahead and test our pattern in a new document. So let's go File New. Uh, this time I'm going to use the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper, which is 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels. Um, we can leave our board selected here, resolution of 300 pixels per inch, and then uh, background contents. Uh, we can leave as transparent uh, with RGB color mode and then click on create. And then uh, for this, I am going to uh, use a pattern adjustment layer here, and then we'll bring up our patterns panel here. If you do not see this, you can access it by going to window patterns. And then I'm just going to select my newly created pattern here. And then if I want to scale it down uh, for this dimension here, I can double click on it. 
Uh, when this dialog box is open, you have the option to um, move around if you want to change the orientation here. Um, if you want to get back to the original, just click on Snap to Origin. And then you can even uh, you can change the scale here. So let's go ahead and try 50%, uh, make it a little bit smaller there. And then you can click on OK. As we can see, it is a seamless pattern here. And then if I wanted to save this as digital scrapbook paper, I would go to File, Export, Export As. And then you can change the file settings here. We'll leave it at JPEG. And then you can choose uh, to change the quality. So typically for digital scrapbook paper, you do want it to be higher quality. So we'll just bring it to the highest there. As you can see under image size, we are 3,600 pixels by 3,600 pixels. And then I just like to select Embed Color Profile and then you can click to export your pattern. Thank you for watching this video on how to use Adobe Photoshop to create a flower pattern using the Mandela feature. Thank you for watching this video. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.